I believe the immigration, quote, deal is dead as a doornail. Am I right? I think you are right. And I think that the Democrats are sort of pushing this false narrative that it's Donald Trump who tanked it. I think it tanked because it was weak. And as, as you've been kind of leading the charge on, on pointing out, it didn't include some of the most basic elements of a border security deal, such as funding for a wall. And so it was meaningless, as Donald Trump sort of pointed out. And now there's there's sort of criticism that oh, Republicans are caving to Trump demands again. But Trump's criticism isn't what made the deal weak. It was weak because it was weak. And and it doesn't say anything about the president, the former president. Or it says that the Senate got um, cornered early on. They made the same mistake they've made before, which is to accept the premise that we can do a deal without a wall. And I just wonder... Is there any Republican senator who will go on record and, and tell you whether or not they even asked for a wall? It's shocking how little it's been a part of the discussions, right? You don't hear senators being asked about it, and you don't see any of them volunteering that this was important. You hear them talking about things like parole authority and, you know, tightening these asylum rules. But, you know, until you have a wall, that incentive structure for people to keep coming over the border will be there as long as there's a pretty good chance they'll get to stay. And there's no barriers to entry, literally and, and figuratively. Uh, the, the razor wire case this week, the Supreme Court upheld the Border Patrol's ability to remove obstacles placed by the Texas governor. And I, I understand the constitutional law ruling there, but barriers are what people want. And Sarah, I don't know what Jim Langford and Tom Tillis had in mind. I haven't talked to them on air about it. And so I'm just curious, has anyone from the conference talked to you, as John Thune or Mitch McConnell or Mike uh, or John Barrasso, has anyone who wants that are the leadership or who wants to be in the leadership, have they talked to you about the wall? They've not, you know, to the extent that we're hearing about the wall, it's mostly from the House side and Republicans in the House side who were highly critical of that deal to begin with. And you did not hear that from from any of the negotiators and frankly, from, from very few of the senators. I think that some of the, the more conservative ones obviously really want a wall, especially those from border states like Senator Ted Cruz. But they weren't necessarily part of the talks. And so I think it's unsurprising that these collapse and sort of shows a pretty glaring tactical error from Republicans who do support aid to Ukraine for tying these two together and allowing aid for Ukraine to languish this long. Now, I do support aid for Ukraine, and I hope they bring forward the same the bill and they send it to the House. I don't know if the House is going to bring it to a vote or not. Is that the plan now? I think that there's still this sense that McConnell is trying to keep the deal on life support somehow. He tried to walk back some of the comments to the conference that had leaked and said, you know, I I, I still support uh, this tactic. We're still looking at it. But I, I think that the, the briefly, the short-lived news cycle surrounding the deal being dead allowed some Republicans to come out and say maybe what they really felt, which is, you know, this deal isn't going anywhere. And so I, it's hard to see how it comes back from the dead this way. But McConnell is still holding out that this can somehow get done. But I do think the writing is on the wall that these two things will have to be unhitched from each other at some point if Ukraine aid is going to move forward because the border deal is probably not. Well, they can do Israel, Ukraine and Taiwan together, but do not put in the border deal because it just it makes Republicans look bad. The, the former president is right. It has to be perfect. It's not perfect without 900 miles of wall, so that's that's a, a thing. I want to get your reaction, Sarah, to the International Court of Justice this hour ruling that Israel can be tried for genocide. It's repulsive. It's disgusting. It's, it's actually one of those moments when you realize there is no such thing as an international organization worth its name. Uh, do you expect any action in Congress to condemn this move? You know, the Congress has actually been, especially in the House, pretty strong on this situation. I'll, I'll be interested to see what Joe Biden does as well, what, how, what he says about it, because he's been increasingly boxed in from the far left of his party, and he's under more and more progressive pressure. I mean, he's hemorrhaging votes from, from the left and from the middle right now, so he's in a really hard place. I've been kind of waiting to see if the progressive pressure causes him to shift at all, and so he will be under a lot of pressure not to condemn this kind of move forcefully because it's what the, the activist wing of his party wants to see. They'll be celebrating this. 